Hey guys, so I want to talk about grouping and kind of a few things that I use them for. And so with the uh, Autodesk Revit Advanced Sample, the architectural one, uh, if you don't have this, you could check out their site. You should have it on the de default download. And you could also use any other model. You could open up a brand new model and start just drawing some elements like walls. And then you can do this as well. Uh, you can use the exact same process I'm going to do within this model and you should be good um, so with this open I'm just going to go to a 3d view just so we can see what we're doing and with this open I'll zoom in a bit and I'll just select on some items and we can come up here and then see create a group and before I do that well, let's let's read it. So it's, it creates a group essentially of the items that you select, and then you can then take that group and apply it in a number of locations. You know, for example, if you're doing a hotel that has a lot of the same exact rooms, you can modify one group, and then it will automatically modify every single placement of that specific group. Uh, and it's just a quick way of editing a bulk of items because within that group you can have system families, families, they can all be nested within that group and edited and then you can save it and then apply the changes to every single group uh, within your model. And it really depends on how, you know, you could do it even if you just have two two of the exact replications of, of or, um, two replicates of one room that just happened to be the same that may be easy to do manual but you could definitely do it with a group as well and, and you know up to a hundred different iterations or a hundred of the same rooms so and you can see up here we have model groups so this is where you would see it on the architectural tab and I think you may be able to see it on other tabs as well yeah so we have it here it's probably on the systems and the steel actually I don't see it here and a good reason why you may not see it on the uh, systems tab is because as soon as you group a system or let's say you know a, a, a portion of a, an entire duct system it essentially cuts it out of that that system and now you can't calculate your loads correctly and you essentially can't analyze and, and use it for the full intentions of of of, of a uh, of an MEP system um, you're essentially breaking it off and creating a, a, an individual system within a group you can however add MEP um, portions into a group if that's something that you uh, would like to do so uh, you know for example if we want to take a wing of this uh, building we can easily come in here, select a bunch of items, maybe filter it and get rid of things that we don't want. Okay, let's just say we want all this. It may prompt some warnings. Um, we would come over here or here. Let's remove curtain panels, curtain wall grids, because that might be causing us some problems. So let's create the group. And it may be causing us problems because we're not selecting the entire uh, curtain grid and just selecting some of the elements and not the entire one. Um, I don't want to, uh, I don't need those elements to show this example, so I'll just skip over those. And we'll just grab these. We get a warning of uh, the structural elements will be detached from the grids. Um, we'll just say okay to this. And you can give it whatever name. I'm going to leave it as a default. You can then open it in an editor so that you can start moving and saving it, whatever it is that you want to do. Add more stuff to that group. I'm going to press okay. And then from here, you can come up with it select. It net, well, essentially, it, it's its own group now. So we can still select individual elements. But if we come over to the group location, you can see the dashed lines. Select it. We can select the group. And then with it selected, we have a number of options. We can edit the group, as we saw that option before, to get in there. 
And just to show that, it's going to give this kind of uh, um, transparent color or this kind of beige or tan color to all the elements and then give us our shaded view or whatever view type we have uh, of the elements that we're working in. And we can actually add elements to this too. And you'll get this dialog box that kind of floats around. We can add and remove stuff. So I'm going to exit out of that. I don't want to show that, but I do want to link. Before I do that, there's also ungroup. I mean, if you just want to ungroup everything uh, after you've done all your changes, you know you're not going to do anything else, ungroup it and you, you're good to go. So on link, if we press that, elements will be deleted. I'll press OK. We can then replace it with a new model or we can replace it with an existing project. So for example, if we have a external link, so for example, if we do this one first, so replace with new project, it's going to create a link that we can place anywhere. So, you know, for example, if we want to place it locally, we now have that link. It's a it's separate Revit model. It's going to be placed on the desktop. It's going to be linked in here. And then down here, let's say that at some point we have got into that link by itself and then started editing some elements then we could come back in here and actually replace with an existing uh, file. Um, let's say if it was copied or whatever the, the, the reasons, uh, because generally if it was updated and then saved, you should see the most updated, but you can repath it to other iterations of that link. So what we'll do is we'll do the first one and then I'm just gonna place it on my desktop. We'll say, same as group name, so it should be group one, I think. We'll save it. So we see we got a little, <clears throat> we got some warnings in here. I'm just going to ignore these. Do, you know, when you're getting in there and selecting items, um, it, it, when you group elements, it, it doesn't handle very well when you're detaching stuff um, or you're selecting half of a system um, it's more or less kind of just messing with it and seeing what you can do um, seeing if that works um, just grabbing what it is that you need and then kind of working around and trying different things so with that select or with that linked I can now come out here and see that I've just created this group one and what's nice here is if, say you're working in two parts of the building, um, be a little bit more cautious on the way that you're selecting items so that they actually come out without warnings. But say you're working on uh, one side of the building and then the other wing, you're, uh, somebody else is working on it. You can separate these out as links and then now the two separate teams are super two separate projects can be treated as their own projects within a model and just have this overall linked uh, uh, building within theirs so that they can view the overall but then do work in their individual wing without kind of over or kind of overlapping with the other teams so I'll, I'll just show that real quick and what I like to do is with this link uh, selected we'll just give it I want to hide it real quick to make sure our group isn't in there. And then we'll close this. Actually, I am going to save this because I had to upgrade it. And then from here, we'll open up our link that we just created from the group. And then from our manage tab, manage links, and then I'll add a link. 
and then I'll browse out to my location where I've kept my overall architectural model So now we have it in there and then we can hide this link and do whatever it is that we need to do it but then we can start modifying the elements that we need to modify um, depending on what you're trying to do um, you may need to bring in more elements but you know for this example if somebody was working in this location of the building you may want to grab you know everything that's located in the area of work and maybe even take these existing uh, roofs and ceilings and floors and actually break them uh, into separate areas. So cutting this uh, floor down here to then bring it into a link so that you don't, you know, as we saw, bring in the entire system. So we've got the entire floor. So if somebody was working on this side, they essentially um, wouldn't be working in those elements because they wouldn't live there and you would have some problems when you actually merged or bind this link back into the overall one and you don't want that to happen so um, so essentially you could just come in here and then you could just copy your um, whatever the element is so you could just copy this and then treat it as a it's um separate element after you've edited it so if you come in here and edit you can then reshape that to you know whatever area that it's being edited in so for example if we just deleted all this You can see now that we've got that area by itself. But before you did it, actually, um, you may, like I said, copy that. So then, come over here, and then we'll just paste it in the same exact area we'll see that it's overlapping um, each other because it's in the exact spot and then we'll edit it I'll do a trim command So now we have that area, so we can start editing that floor. It, you know, for example, if it needed to be extended one way or another out here, then that can happen. And the folks that are working in this area, you know, for example, if this this floor was also separated, then they could do their work and not. Uh, and then when this this gets binded back into the overall architectural model, then you shouldn't have any problems. And you know. Um, do this all you the, actually do this all before you bring it in to your link um, that you created your group with you would first separate this floor into different parts and then just group whatever area that you're working in so for example this one so that we're only seeing this so if I hide this you would essentially just see this part while you're working in there and then eventually in your overall model so if we close this if I open up this model again we can then do all our, all our work and then say after the 
the job is finished, we can then archive the one with the link in it, um, or the our group. Essentially, we can just archive that. Then we have a archived version of that entire project, and then we can then bind this link. back into the overall model yes and then you're good to go to continue um, working or continue developing this this project in the future and then from there um, well, now you have both both projects have been incorporated into this overall architectural model everything's up to date so far based off of the design and then future iterations or future um, add-ons to this building can be started from the um, project work of the you know of what has been already done everything's been incorporated into this model should be as far as you know it updated with everybody's uh, different projects content all into this kind of kind of federated model essentially so I hope this helps um, again this is kind of a unique instance of using groups there's obviously a number of ways that you could use them um, creating a group and then using it for for um, uh, similar rooms um, that way you don't have to uh, continuously update the exact same rooms manually every time you could use it um, to uh, pull out different instances for for design you know a type of design option and whatever the case is um, um, I'm sure there's a few others that I'm not mentioning here try it out see what works for you hopefully this video helps you and I really appreciate you guys watching thanks a lot